Hi guys, what is up? And today we are back here at Ingram Orchids and More. And today we're going to try and do a full collection tour. And I say full collection tour. Um, we're going to do, you know, a walk around and try to look at the majority of the plants that we have. This may not be an all inclusive tour just because it would be hours long, but we're going to do our best to just go through, you know, what we have uh, as quickly as we can, stopping on some. Um, some plants and giving them more time if we think they deserve more time but y'all have asked for it and uh, so we're gonna try and make it happen and if this doesn't work out great maybe in the future we'll do a, a better video but uh, we're gonna try and keep this a little bit shorter because if we do an extensive collection it'll be really long but I'm starting off here today with some um, a cattleya that's just now blooming uh, this is not its first bloom but it is just opened a couple days ago this is Hawaiian Prominence America, and this is a excellent, excellent Catlia. It's a very dark ruby red, and it smells amazing. Uh, it's got a very just classic Catlia smell. Um, it's a little bit more compact than most Catlias, but it's blooming. It's beautiful. We love it. We thought we'd show it to you. Maybe it deserves its own video, but for now, we'll just put this in here, and it's going to be hard to to figure out where to go so we may do some jumping back and forth so here is our our outside kitchen slash bar area which has now turned into not a kitchen and bar and more of it's just an orchid pedestal where we keep a lot of our our blooming plants so now instead of you know bar space anytime a plant's blooming we just stick it up here while it's blooming and then we stick it back out where it belongs when it's done blooming but that being said i do have some stuff that's just kind of sitting here like this is the Bulbophyllum Mazda Valleyaceum that's growing in a basket with tree fern this thing grows like a weed excuse the weeds we grow those really well here too we got some sick orchids that we're rehabbing this funny looking plant that Catherine has I don't know what it's called she knows what it's called a rattlesnake plant we still have pop city still just hanging on uh, it's been blooming for quite a while now and the flowers are all faded uh, here is Dendrobium lowii, not its most spectacular blooming by far, uh, but it got left out for all the entire cold this year. Um, so I'm sure that did a number on it, but this is Dendrobium lowii. It's one of the Niagara hirsutes. It's a little more tricky to grow, but it's not impossible here in Florida. Here we have Glen Dendrobium glenis king. This also got left out uh, in the cold and it blasted a lot of the buds. And there's probably quite a lot of thrips damage on there too, because Again, I've not sprayed in a while. Really hard to get these small antelope types on. Yeah, so this is a Cantaliculatum hybrid. And if um, we don't think we've done a Cantaliculatum video, but Cantaliculatum is one of my favorite dendrobiums and it makes excellent hybrids. So we just did the Hawaiian prominence. Uh, Rinko Stylus Gigantia, that's on finishing. the way out. We have uh, RTH Elizabeth Palmer. Did an orchid spotlight video on did that. A spotlight video on that. I think we did. Did we do a spotlight video on this one? No, but it's been featured. Uh, yeah, this is War Paint, a cultivar sunbulb. It's a huge, huge plant. And over here we have one of my favorites, Prostechia cochleata. It's just now finished blooming. Got some seed pods on there. Uh, some seedlings that we're working on that need to be repotted. Um, this is a cat lay that Catherine just got called Magic Bill. Uh, it needs a new home. It's done blooming now. I'll have to find a place for that. All right, so let's move over here to these tables. So starting in the corner, this is a deciduous orchid. This is Chysis. Uh, this species is Bractescence. Uh, a lot of people grow Chysis like Lamingii, or uh, I might be butchering that pronunciation. There's a, a pink, rosy colored Chysis. Uh, I think it's Lamingii. Uh, that's a pretty popular one, but this one is the white, one of the white species. This is Bractescens. I really like this species. Um, here we just have some sort of generic Oncidium. Um, we have a vanilla growing in the corner here, suffering from the cold severely. These are some ant plants. This is not a Myrmecodia. This is a Hydnophytum. I got this from uh, one of my best friend's father. He gave it to him. It's a Hydnophytum. Mos Mosley Mosleyanum. I had quite a few of these at one time. I gave most of these away as gifts. But now I just got these two. And they're called an ant plant, just like Myrmecodia. They have these little holes in this swollen base. 
and they have like these little tunnels and stuff that naturally support ant colonies ants will colonize the inside of this plant and protect it from you know herbivores and anything that would come along and damage the plant here we got a little uh, Cattleya chief berry. This is a great little miniature Cattleya. You can tell it's about to bloom here Growing in these little pots that Catherine got In the shredded tree fern It's a cute little magenta flower. We have another Oncidium wildcat just a an intergeneric Oncidium type Here is one um, one of my co-workers uh, Glenn, Glenn Gary, if you're watching, he gave me this Tillandsia, and I believe it is Tillandsia gerardii. It bloomed for the first time this year, um, and the spike, we cut it off here. You can see the new growths are starting to come out the side there. I think it's a really, really cool species of Tillandsia because it's extremely fragrant little purple flowers on it. Really pretty, so thanks, Glenn. Yeah, this is Dendrobium sandere. We did a video on that. Really old flowers yeah, here. Really old flowers. They last a long time, but this time they've, you know, they've beaten and battered. They got you whites know, like the first to go. They got thrift spots. They got botrytis spots. It's all over the place. Some sort of Tillandsia that came from uh, um, one of my, again, the same. My best friend's dad gave me this plant. Uh, I, honestly, I can't even re remember which Tillandsia it is. Uh, but that one's got a white and pink flower. It's really pretty. Here we got uh, Dyneema polybulbon. This used to be known as Encyclia polybulbon. This is a really wet, wet grower. It likes a lot of water. Hence why it's in the tree fern. A real sad looking Bratonia. Uh, this is also pretty sad. I don't think this thing's doing too well. Domingoa purpurea. Up there we got Oncidium twinkle of some sort. All right, so up here we got a couple Oncidium twinkle types. This is, what is this one? This is Chiroform, that's the species, one of the species for twinkle. And on this totem here, we have a real sad dying Rodrigesia. I don't know why these Rodrigesias never do well for me. There's a Telemnia species. I don't remember if it's Bahamensis, Ferragata, something up there behind it. Then, Right here, also didn't look like it's doing super hot. This is Brassavola nodosa cultivar mini mouse. It's one of those miniature dwarfed nodosas. I think this guy's probably got a little bit of rhizoc or something in the in the thing in the stem there. That might end up going the way of the way of the dumpster. Then we have Epidendrum porpex. We did an orchid spotlight video on that. some sort of stanhopia. It's a pretty white flower when it blooms. Yeah, I think it's oculata. Oncidium sherry baby. That is Bulbophyllum laxiflorum. That thing's real easy to grow. It likes Florida a lot, a lot of water. Then we have a, uh, a new hybrid. I've not bloomed this yet. Um, I just got this this year. It's Paphenia Majestic, which is a, it's a hybrid, it's a primary hybrid between two different species. I forget uh, the species, but Paphenia Majestic. This is a new one as well for me this year. Not blown this. Here, I'll pull it down. It's Macropodanthus olatus. So that'll be interesting. Some sort of little volunteer Schomburg. You have no clue what it is. We'll find out one year, some years from now, probably. Uh, Cochleanthes amazonica. This plant was doing really, really nicely. It was super bushy, and this year when I repotted it, I, you know, I took out a lot of the old moss and put in some new moss, and for whatever reason, it just declined. Um, I don't know if that one's going to recover or not. But this thing was really nice, really bushy, but all of a sudden this year it's kind of tanked on me. Gyrac Fragrance, it's another twinkle type. Not blooming. This is a uh, Platycerium vicii, variety of Lemoinii. It's a silver leafed uh, staghorn. We got uh, an unknown volunteer Platycerium. 
came off of uh, an orchid mount. It's probably a whole tumiae. Some sad looking orchids there. We hang the ones, the sad ones on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We got some Arides, Felcata. Showing the signs of not liking the cold. This is what happens when you let your Vandacious orchids get too cold. Here we got Dendrobium Jai. Jaiho Delight. It's a Niagara Hirsute. This one uh, had some rot when we first got it, and um, we separated some pieces off of it, tried to save it, and this is one of the pieces that's starting to make a recovery. And then a whole bunch of Manda stuff up there. I don't know if I want to pull all that stuff down or not. It's a lot of work. We got this on Sidium here. Probably a wildcat. This is the golden red star, I believe. It was definitely darker this year just because of the cold snap, which is really fun. Here Sorry. on our totem, we have a Tillandsia chiapensis, and there's a vanilla growing, a vanilla tahitiensis growing on this totem with some uh, Vandemaria pieces, a Tillandsia utriculata or something like that. I don't think there's anything else growing on there. And then this vanilla back here. Yep, there's another vanilla growing there. There's a whole lot of vanillas. Vanilla grows real well in Florida if you don't let it get too cold. The deer like to eat it too. The deer do like to eat it. Our darling. Frosty Our... Dendrobium Frosty Dawn. Doesn't stop, y'all. We have QF Makani. No blooms on that right now. Up here we have your dendrobium Sonia Ang. It just finished blooming. And it was then, fresh during our Sarasota Orchid Show haul. We've got a whole bunch of stuff hanging up at the top there. It's really hard to take that stuff down, you guys. But we'll try to maybe focus on the stuff that's blooming. But let's start on the first level here. So. so we got another dendrobium. Chunicha queen star with a small Tillandsia duradii growing. Just hanging here for the meantime. A sad looking vanda that looks like it probably belongs in the trash can. Or Tillumia corner. Another <laughs> vanilla. A lot of vanilla. And we've never bloomed a vanilla here. We, every time they get big enough, we leave them out in the cold and they get set back. This is Green Lantern, Dendrobium Green Lantern. This is another one of Catherine's favorites. It doesn't stop. Dendrobium Cruentum. Now this is one of those Niagara Hirsutes that's a little bit more finicky. We had, it was touch and go with this plant there for a while. Had some rotten bulbs, but it seems to have bounced back now. What's blue tango? It's Acmea blue tango, I think. How's I don't it? know if this is bacterial spots or if I burn this with something, but they got some brown spots on the new growth. Um, it seems to slow down. I don't know if I accidentally sprayed something on there I didn't like, or if that was like a, uh, maybe some bacterial pump going on or what. Got another Tolumnia here. Columnia Gyrac Firm, Gyho Fantasy. Looks like a miniature Oncidium. Yeah, We've got another it. one. Gyrac Flyer Leopard. Super cute. And then here is one of my favorite Spathoglottis. It looks real sad right now. Again, this one hates the cold. This is Spathoglottis Kimbaliana. This is one of those yellow species that has uh, spikes that will just bloom and bloom for years as long as you don't ruin the spikes but i did i, I forgot this plant this uh last this this winter we've had some cold nights and i forgot to bring this in and it really set it back on cedium special autumn bunch of spikes on that every orchid grower in florida should have this these things are weeds look at all the spikes on there yeah they can have thousands of flowers at a time when they get to be big we got Vanda Onuma Delight. We got a spike. These are really pretty pink flowers. 
I just got those as top cuttings. Right here we got, oh, this is kind of falling over. I should have maybe zip tied this into its basket. Here's a Guarianthi Beringiana. A sad looking 10 pences on a wood, wood knot there. So here we got Dendrobium secundum. They call this the toothbrush orchid because of the, uh, the flowers. They're still forming right now. You get our buds and there's some buds back there. They're not open yet, but they will be here in a few days. They make these little, little toothbrush looking spikes. And then this guy is loaded with spikes. Dendrobium amethyst of glossum. I'd like to count the spikes to find out how many are on there. We'll have to do a video just on this plant. You got, you got some cold damage on some of the buds and some thrip blast, but there's still quite a lot of buds left. Then we got some, is this Abracadabra? Nope, this is the Dendrobium Memoria Ted Bradstrom. That's a really pretty white Latoria. I don't usually grow a whole lot of Latorias, but I picked that one out because it had a really nice flower. Want to tell them what this white powder is that you have in the pot? Oh, that was some of that stuff that we're trying experimentally. John Finer over at the Plant Propagator uh, told or made a video about the uh, is it Myco Bliss? It's a mycorrhizal inoculum powder. I tried putting it on some of the plants, you know, not as a, a formal experiment, just just to see if there's any anecdotal evidence that it helps the plants. But here is a very sad-looking Renanthera calcium. I don't grow a lot of renanthras just because they are extremely cold tolerant and this plant is probably not going to live for too much longer. Here we got one of my favorites. Now that I'm saying that it doesn't look very good, it needs probably got some cold damage. Phendopsis lysocheloides. I'm sure I will be ancient by the time that plant blooms. Another Beringiana. Yeah, another Guarianthi Beringiana. It's a super easy species to grow here in Florida. It was from our seed pod video. Here, Bob Palafian sent me some uh, some flowers to outcross this with and they are still holding on there. So these look like they're gonna be good. And Trichocentrum Palmer, just now fading. Kind of a tricky plant, but once you get it right. Yeah, it really hates the cold. Here we got another Dilatoria. This is Dendrobium Memoria Sugolan. Really pretty white. I usually only pick out Latorias if they got real nice white flowers on them. Here is a, ooh, watch out, there's a wasp on that plant. Uh, we have Dendrobium Meva Abracadabra. So, Ashley, if you're watching, uh, this was a, a challenge to try and grow up this, uh, this plant to a specimen size. And, you know, we're making progress. I had a huge Dendrobium little atro at one time that was in like a pot like that big around. It was massive. So I'm trying to recreate that with this plant here. So we're uh, More vanilla. <laughs> Trying to, to piss off that wasp. We got dendro or certipodiums. They're coming out of dormancy. This came from Brethren orchids. This is Trichocentrum luridum. It's very similar to our native uh, Trichocentrum undulatum. Um, flower is a little bit darker brown, but here is your spike growing towards the sky here. Makes me nervous when they get this long. <laughs> yeah, they do. Step on over this way. What makes me nervous is that wasp. <laughs> Welcome to outdoor orchid growing, y'all. So this is our orchid tree, and there's everything is on this tree. There's so many <laughs> orchids on this tree; it is it's insane. Um, lots of Encyclia tampensis, lots, which yeah, lots which of which is what this bushy stuff is. So in a couple what months here, we'll have. We'll have a display of that, but if you saw our Encyclia Tampensis video, this tree was just covered in the blooms. Yeah, so here, let me see this for a second. So the very first plants when we moved in here that I put on this tree were these Tampensis, this Vanda, this uh, Cattleya Yin Corona, Green Genie or Green Genius or something like that, 
Um, and that was all that was on this tree. And those are considerably sized now. And there's also a B BLC windward flare on there somewhere. It's all been grown together now. It's just a big, big mess. But now there's all sorts of other stuff. There's dendrobiums on here. They got buds. Every time I have like a little orchid or something, or like a piece of something that, you know, I don't want to pot up. Sometimes I'll just, I'll take this moss and I'll make a hole and stick it in there. And then, you know, occasionally you get stuff that does not make it. It's occasionally you'll get stuff like this was a, a single bulb piece of an encyclia phoenicia, stuck it in there and now it's growing. It's amazing sometimes what will grow on a tree, but won't grow in a pot. Then up here, we got some Tillandsias and a Cattleya Spring Drum variety Volcano Queen. Oh, this is the cutting from Kathy. Oh yeah, Kathy uh, just gave me a cutting off of her Dendrobium purpureum Alba. So I stuck it over here just to see if it'll grow. Some Kikis, because a lot of Dendrobiums, even if, if you got a good, healthy, um, suitable, uh, you can cut it off and it'll throw Kikis. We've it's a slower method of propagation, but it works. Got buds on this. Yeah, some dendrobium noble buds over there. There is a vanilla, uh, the native Deloniana, the leafless thing. It's growing its way up into the canopy of this tree now. Antelope type dendrobiums over here. Wait, wait, wait. We got to talk about something that's more important. Spikes on these certipodiums. That's very important. <laughs> So there. We'll get to show that off for you guys. Charles, you asked me about, if you watch this video, Charles, you asked me about the certipodium. So here are some spikes. They always emerge simultaneously with the new growth side by side. And I told y'all in another video that this spectacularly never blooms because I always let it get too cold. And here, here you go. You got one flower, but this thing was loaded with spikes and most of them have blasted. But we got to see some, some flowers. It's such a it's such an easy plant to grow, but you got to be so vigilant to bring it in for the cold, because it always blooms at the coldest time of year. And y'all, we and keep uh, our kids alive first, and then the orchids come second. Yeah, see all look at this is just so sad. I I deserve to have my orchids taken away from me. <laughs> well, this could have been a really really nice display this year, but once again, what are you gonna do? What were you telling us about this antelope? We've got some antelope bins here. Yeah, again, they did not like the cold. All these little spots showed up as soon as we had the cold snaps. We had way too many drops in temperature this winter, so it was just really hard doing the orchid shuffle. So new potted certipodium seedlings. And then... Uh, Brassavola cugulata. We've got another Beringiana, but this Ooh. is the Alba. Yeah. Bob Palafian uh, gave me a piece of this. This is super cool. I've never ever seen a Beringiana Alba, but he gave me the seedling here, or it was a division or a seedling or something like that. And I am super excited to grow this. It's a white Beringiana. And then here we have a Paul Storm, which is probably could stand to go outside of the Lanai. It needs a little bit more yeah. sun, but we've got some new growth here. These are really well mounted or potted, but we have several of these around the property. We got some more certipodium seedlings. Um, and then Celia. This came from SVO, uh, Sunset Valley Orchids. They they grow a lot of Ancelias. He he has a really nice breeding line of some super dark Gigantia Ancelias, and this is supposed to be one of them. And it's really good at growing uh, weeds too. So if y'all haven't noticed. We grow the weeds as good as we grow the orchid. All right, and then this is, I'm not sure if this is named yet. I don't think that it is, but this is um, Starfire Cross with Paradise Rose. Um, this is um, supposed to be a really pretty flower. We don't think we've bloomed this one yet. No, but hopefully this year we will see something happen. It's doing really well. I think we have seen this plant bloom at the nursery. Wait, but not in our care. Wait, let's look at that name. Starfire by Paradise. I think we have seen that one. I I don't know if I've got a picture of it or not. This plant, or we haven't had it bloom in our care. So, and then this is what I got from Plantio at our the 
last September sale. It's Trichocentrum uh, carthaginense. This is a really, really interesting Trichocentrum as well. And Trichocentrums, you'll notice, are called mule ear, mule ear oncidiums because they have these very thick, fleshy leaves. It's kind of like, like well, they look like mule ears. Yeah. And then also got a Cattleya Warneri Pink Perfection, which has an award. HCC AOS. Well, this plant had an award. This is a seedling of Pink Perfection with an award crossed with Orchid Eros Picante. So we, we will see. Maybe this will be an awardable plant. Another Plantio La Orcadia. This is in Cyclia Boothiana. So I love, love, love Florida natives. And this is a Florida native in Cyclia Boothiana. This is actually Prostechia now. But this came from Plantio once upon a time. They had some seedlings. I don't know if they still do. But Boothiana is a Florida native and it is cute as a button. They call it the dollar orchid. And then again, more Certipodium seedlings because Tristan is a Certipodium addict. This doesn't have an ID. What'd you do with this? Oh, this is from uh, a seedling from John. This was a uh, Cattleya pumila. I should, I think it's had a tag. tag. This, he, I got some flasks from John of his Cattleya pumila. And there should have been a tag in there, but it is gone now. And then this is from Palmer's. This is in Cyclia Chloraluca. Yeah, Chloraluca. This is a really cool little yellow. Got a or new yellow growth. green. Yellow oh. green. And then this was my one of my newer acquisitions. We showed it in the blooming video, but this is Goranthia orantiaca, SVO spots, crossed with Goranthia orantiaca, SVO spots too. Um, this is an excellent species, very, very bright orange flowers, and we've got more buds on the way. Obviously, you know me, I love my orange, and this is just such a lovely pop of color with the green, but definitely recommend you guys adding this to your collection if it's able to grow in your environment. And we do have those for sale at the nursery. And then we got this from Bredrin at the, One of the last houses. open house. But Goranthi Hennessyana uh, forma cerulea. And then for new watchers, cerulea is just code word for blue um, in the orchid world. Um, and it also is a kind of keyword for it's more money, but <laughs> things to look out for. Yeah. Um... Philip and his wife Elizabeth, they're really good orchid growers. And uh, on his website, I think they have a sample photo of some of these. This is probably a seedling, I'm guessing. I guess it's a seedling, I don't think it's a clone. Uh, but he has some sample photos, I think, on his website if it's still there. Yeah, but so we're still really waiting pretty. to see it flower. Uh, more Certipodium punctatum, Florida native um, seedlings here. We've got my little walrus. Um, PRC is. I'm trying to remember. This it's is like Proctavilla. No, Prosecchia. Anyway, PRC QF Hulu Manu. It's this in Cyclia Chloraluca crossed with Radiata, I think. Yeah. So. Or something like that. It's really, really pretty and it smelled amazing. Look and look, we got a spike. Juicy bulb and a spike. So that's exciting. Sometimes you go to bed at night and your plant hasn't done anything and then you wake up and you got spikes. So. Um, this big Cattleya here. Talk about it. It's one of your favorites. I'm so excited. Catherine loves this Cattleya. I'll have to insert a picture, but. But, uh, this is Cattleya Brian Wheeler cultivar grandson. We got this, um, from Robert at Palmer's and he brought it out of the keeper house and he's just like. Yeah. Need more, I need bench space, and I'm like, oh, it's okay. I'll give up bench space for this, but yeah. this is a really gorgeous corsage type flower, and oh my gosh, I'll insert a picture to make sure you guys see it. But he took it, it out of the again, uh, he took it out of the keeper house and I, or for to bring it for sale, and I was like, I know a lady who's been looking for one of those. <laughs> so uh, it's mine now. Um, and then here we have blooming is Dendrobium white graced Sato. Yeah, this is the first time blooming for us on this one. This Such is beautiful. An excellent, excellent dendrobium from Florida. So this is, uh, it's like 50th the state by uh, Dendrobium speciosum, which we've talked about. You know, speciosum is one of those Aussie dens that's extremely rugged, and this plant gets its ruggedness from that speciosum. But, but, this plant blooms continuously when they get to be 
big plants. At work, we have some big, big plants of this, and I don't ever see them without flowers. Yeah, they're really pretty, and I don't know if the camera can pick this up right now, but it sparkles in the sunlight. Yeah. Really pretty. Um, Catlia pumila from John Finer's Flask. This is a community pot of pumilas. And then, right here, I'm not gonna lift it because I don't wanna mess with the seedlings, but we've got Encyclia Phoenicia here. This is from Brethren Orchids, um, fat juicy bulbs. We've got a Brassavola. It was Perennii, but now it's... Uh, Burnett Taurus. Burnett Taurus. Um, fun when they reclassify stuff, so then you have to relearn names all over again. This Ooh. Cattleya here in the terracotta pot is RLC Kylocobiashi Palmer Orchids. Um, that is one of uh, Palmer Orchids' signature plants there. It is gorgeous. Very mm. colorful Cattleya. You know, I said I don't like colorful Cattleyas, but this is one that the colorful Cattleyas, they do match. And then... So I really like Kylo. This is Epidendrum ciliare species. Just kind of sitting. It's kind of growing to the tray, so I can't get it out for y'all. And Damn. then... So this is a slow-growing plant, Epidendrum ciliare. It makes beautiful white fringed flowers. They're very bizarre looking, but I've not bloomed these seedlings yet. I have two of them. This year I had a spike on my big one upstairs, and it blasted because I didn't spray, spray for thrips. And then this small one here I got from the Plantio September sale. It's Red Dragon uh, cultivar, but it's Mini Doris Red Dragon. Still haven't seen it bloom yet, but it's it will happen sooner or later. And then this big guy here with a spike and free spider webs. Yep, spiders everywhere. What is this? It's an Encyclia Cordigera uh, variety rosea. This is the dark form. Super big, you guys. Look at that. That's yeah. crazy. And then we got some more Certipodiums back there. Here in the wooden basket, we've got Insidium Gold Dust number two. It is just finished blooming, but all of these were old spikes. We can cut those now that they're brown and twiggy. Uh, but this put on quite the display. If you've seen our YouTube shorts or Instagram reels, um, this is just an explosion of flowers and super duper fragrant. Um, right here, we've got another Certipodium. So, Beth, if you're watching, she may not be watching. This is the, uh, the piece of her plant that she gave me. Uh, this is from El Salvador, uh, Certipodium punctatum. So the genetics are El Salvadorian. And this thing grows like a weed. I mean, it's such beautiful, nice bulbs on this plant. So thank you, Beth. And then... I will get the stick and we will be back and we will look at some of these plants. All right, the other palm tree that we have in the lanai, we've just got a lot of different stuff growing on here too. If you've got trees, use it. It's good real estate for orchids if you've got the right kind, but we've got some grammatophyllums growing in here. We've got some more encyclia, uh, tampensis growing on here. All the way down, we've got a staghorn fern at the base here. Lots of different encyclias. This is the one that, oh goodness, this is the one that smells like feet and urine combined. I hate that plant, but it is really pretty. So I will give it that. Um, we've got a lot of stuff kind of just wedged in here. We've got a few dendrobiums. But this typically, everything on here starts blooming in the summertime so it's gonna be a hot minute on that one got a dendrobium cane here got a lot of stuff going on but it's happy and doing well and in this palm tree here um we call it the Kezi Palm. It's named after our oldest daughter, but we've got, um, we had to replace it a couple years ago and we named it after her because they were the same height at one point. And now it's outgrown her. But here, sad looking thing, Ionopsis um, unitricoloides, probably butchering that, but this spiked a few weeks ago and it was really pretty flowers. And then we've got 
Tristan, what's this plant? Oh, this is a singing tango. Singing tango, okay. It's a, it's like El Hatillo by Tampenses or something like that. Oh, okay. Maybe. And then here, that is spiking, is an Encyclia Phoenicia. Super fragrant and beautiful. This is the species from Cuba. And we have another Encyclia Cordigera variety, Rosea. This is the dark cultivar, and this is cross, a sib cross. Um, so that's growing there. I'm sorry, it was Tempentis by Memoria Eichel. There's that correction, y'all. Um, we got some bromeliads growing in here, along with another staghorn fern. What type of staghorn is this, honey? Um, bifurcatum. Bifurcatum. So all my platycerium lovers out there. Just looks like moose antlers. And then we've got a bromeliad over there spiking right now. Been waiting for this to open. It's been weeks, y'all. Just trying to be patient. Thing here that's getting way too much sun. This is Lamara Five Aces. It's a Bretonnia uh, hybrid with a, I think it's Nambo Pixie by uh, Bretonnia. So this has got some uh, Bardendrum in there, Epidendrum, and probably uh, Brat or Bretonnia as well. So it's kind of a complex hybrid. But uh, yeah, it's got cute little pink flowers all over it. And blooms for a long time. But I think it's getting a little too much light. Probably a little too much cold. And it did come up there from that Highland bar. Water, yeah. But we've got a mix of like different encyclias, air plants, a few cattleyas, and a lot of bretonias. Ooh, yeah. there's something white blooming back there. What? Where? Right there. Oh, that's a Catlia Walkeriana. We have to get that down. This is Bratonia sanguinea star splash. This is the uh, the white and pink form. I might have a photo of that. Here is the regular uh, sanguinea. This came from my buddy's dad. Give me a piece of this. So, Jeff, if you're watching, thank you. I didn't kill this one. I killed the first one he gave me. <laughs> the first ones don't count. First ones don't count yet. It's secretly a Phoenicia seedling. All right, so here we got Catlia. I said Walker in a minute ago, but this is technically snow blind. Uh, it's been reclassified. They found out it had some lot of GZI in the background somewhere. This is snow blind cultivar Kinney. Yeah, this is a pretty popular one because it's such an easy grower. Um, and there's two of them on here, but this one here is not blooming. You see how small they can bloom. And this is a pretty small little plant, but so it's exciting. giving us two flowers. Look at the little splash on the lip there. Yeah, they have just a hint of blush in the in the lip. So they're not a true alba, more like an albescence. So cute. Y'all like his redneck pole? It's just two sticks strapped together with a hook on it. So here we got uh, one of my favorite Cuban species. This is Encyclia piriformis. It's a lot like Phoenicia, except it's a small, it's a miniature version of Phoenicia and the plants are, or the flowers are a lot different too. Um, but it's got that same vanilla chocolatey smell as Phoenicia. Uh, this is a real difficult one to grow. Um, I've killed them and there's a spider on me. Go away, spider. But this is a really, really rewarding plant to grow because of the smell. It's so intensely like vanilla and chocolate. It smells like milk chocolate, but like you sprinkled some vanilla in there. And these plants are the most piss poor rooters. John Finer did some uh, flask work of this species as well for me. I still got a few of those growing. Not many, not like the Altissima. It, for whatever reason, this plant is just, it's a terrible grower, I'll just say that. It just, it grows terribly. They don't produce a whole lot of roots, but if you can get it right, it's really, really worth it just because it, 
there's nothing like altissima is extremely honey fragrance this is like that chocolate vanilla fragrance it's just it it makes it worth all the trouble it's just beautiful all right so up here on this bar this is you know a little bit of a shadier section because the sun comes up over the house so this only gets afternoon sun through the pool cage but so we got some Tillandsias. I like to go to Tropiflora and find their Tillandsia species. So this is Thomasellii. Here is a Platycerium. This is, um, oh my goodness, I should know this. Why am I drawing? Alsicorn, it's, we, it was labeled as Vassii. Apparently Vassii is synonymous with Alsicorn, but I still call it Vassii because I like the long, thin forks. Uh, a very sad um, Elephantotis. We talked about that one. I repotted it at the wrong time. Some more Tillandsias up there. Here's a Tillandsia stick, but there's also a uh, an orchid on there too. This is, there's a Tillandsia. Oh, goodness gracious, I cannot, I can remember orchid names with the Tillandsias they get me. There's a Funkiana, a Tillandsia Funkiana. Just uh, some random Tillandsia. And then there is a BC Waipuna, which is Sophronitis cernua by Brassavola nidosa. It's a cute little flower. I love that little thing. It's so much easier to grow than the Sophronitis. Sophronitis do not like us here in Florida. We have Platycerium grande. That was a gift from Kathy. And some more Tillandsias. There's like a Bulbulsa and a, maybe a Pseudobalei up there. Here's my Stemeria. Not doing super hot. Did not like this cold weather. A little baby Platycerium wandi. This is Walikii. These ones go dormant, so they look dead, but it should be waking up soon. And here's another Walikii. Another should be waking up soon. There is a whole Tumii up there. Encyclia Rio Clarence. One of Catherine's Dendrobiums, the QFY90. See all the buds forming up there. A few of them are blasting, but oh, we got some opening over here. Those are just now opening, so we'll have to do a video about that. Some of her lipstick plants that she just made a video on, repotting them. A dendrobium tenellum. These are really cool. They just, they don't have a very substantial flower. It's a teeny tiny little thing, but they look so funny. They're like grass. Some more Tillandsias. I don't remember what that one is. There's another stick. Uh, of Ar there's an Argentina up there. I like this. This species here is pretty cool. Gardener eye, Tillandsia gardener eye. It's got a very velvety, soft feel to the, the foliage. And then a Tillandsia katie cat. That's a really nice hybrid there too, katie cat. There's that lipstick plant that Catherine did. Uh, this is just one of the Florida native ones. It just, it was in our trees. So I took it out of the tree and stuck it on a wire. And there are some fasciculatas up there. One of them is I think I have two different varieties of fasciculata. One is from plant, or not plantio, tropiflora. It's the Central American variety. And I think that is the Florida variety. But yeah, that's just where I keep a lot of Tillandsias and just miscellaneous stuff. Okay guys, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't show you the blooming stuff on this top bar in our lanai. Um, you needed to see it, so we can't go through all of them because um, fear of falling off, you know, stuff. I'm standing on a chair, um, but I wanted to show you the blooms up close and personal because a lot of these on this bar are my personal favorites, so let's check it out. I'll catch you if you fall. <laughs> on the first bounce. So these have been open for a hot minute, but I always laugh at the name of this, but this is Vanda Chang Weenie. Um, <laughs> It doesn't, it's not spelled how it sounds, I promise, but this is um, such a beautiful orange color. Um, like I said, they've been open a hot minute, so there is some damage to the flowers, but this is so beautiful and it blooms, I would say twice a year I've gotten it to bloom. So I am really happy with this one. I got it last year. And then this one is such a dark purple, almost looks black, uh, but this is um, Cole Marie. And it smells so good, you guys. I love this one. It is gorgeous. And you can see the bar to the right of me. There's some spikes on that Trichoglottis fasciata. Do, 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 do. You can see our Vanda bar here. 
And the pink one down there is one that Tristan picked out. I'm not, what is that one called, Tristan? I don't remember. It's pink. That's all that matters. Okay, because he likes pink. All right, you guys. This is my cacti and succulent corner, but I've got some aloe here and the spiky devil here growing in an orchids three six five timber pot. Roxy, if you're watching, you're the best. She makes the best pots and mounts, you guys. This is my pencil cactus that was gifted to me from Justine at Blue Jay Orchids, along with Devil's Backbone, which is um, a type of succulent, and it's very bushy. I got it as just a few cuttings, and it is quadrupled in size. Um, here on our crepe myrtle, got a yellow bird. Y'all know my beef with that. It's a white phalaenopsis. And a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff. But let's take a look at Tristan's favorites over here. Right. So, Encyclia Verano. This is Phoenicia by Adinacala. Look a little sad, but beautiful pink flowers. And then, y'all know Golden Peacock. I think we did a video. Did we do a video on gold pika? I think we did. Oh, well. Press pro pro catavola. It's prostechia. Wait. Now I'm confused. It's golden peacock. We'll leave it at that. Um, but we got Oncidium ampliatum, some more Tillandsias. Uh, there's an Encyclia bacordii up here. Some Cali Walkerianas, some volunteer Schumberkias. A big clump of red why not this is a uh, LC vigor nobiceps I uh, maxillaria tenifolio they call this the coconut orchid smells like coconuts another Tillandsia another Brassavola nodosa some Encyclia tempensis in baskets there's an Encyclia guadatam up here this is a cool one. This is Dendrobium Joyce Kelly. It's uh, Spectably by John Sonia. We got a uh, Catlia Elizabeth Fulton. That's from Plantia. That one's a really cool flower. In a broken pot, needs a new, needs a new home. Then we have a couple wood mounts with Encyclia Placata and some Tampensis with some Why Not seedlings growing on it. There's a whole mess up there. Got a whole lot of stuff over here. We got some Ceratoponiums, an Ancelia, some Lelia angelata albas. This is Lelia marginata, an unknown Dendrobium kingianum hybrid of some sort. Don't know exactly what it is. Tag's long gone. Ceratopodium. Um, Myrmecophylla or Schomburkia Thompsoniana variety Albo Um uh, If you ask me, this is its own species, Myrmecophylla Albo purpurea. It's got the white flowers with a little fuchsia lips on it. Sad looking Schomburkia. Here is the Holy Ghost Orchid, Peristeria elata. That's a really, really beautiful plant. Or the plant's not all that pretty right now, but the flower. It's got the little white flowers that look like there's a dove sitting in the flower. That's why they call it the Holy Ghost Orchid. We have a, uh, it's really, really dark, isn't it? Myrmecocalia Memorial Louise Fuchs. They got a big one out front. Here's a smaller one. These can be massive. We have Dendrobium Spectabli, another one. Again, cold really, really bothered this. It did not, did not like the cold. Just some random things on this bench, some Schomburkias, some cuttings of stuff that probably need some homes, more Tillandsias. And in here we have a Tetratonia Dark Prince, our Rustic Spots, Catlea Schilleriana seedling in here. I'm probably not going to be able to get all these out. This is new acquisition VCT Estrella de Aconquia 
Okay, that's how you say that. This is Busy Violet. It's Busy Bev crossed with Violacea. This is a really cool plant. What else we got in here? I'm sure that that looks like LC Shilleriana, which is uh, Perperata by Intermedia. Brassavola nodosa over there. A uh, Cymbidium growing in here, not blooming. Little Black Sambo or Cymbidium Helen Bannerman, I think is the new politically correct name because that's not a very nice name, the old one. You know, Talanza Novakii, this is really cool. It's always red. Then we got Catlia Amethysta Glossa. There's actually two seedlings in here. Somehow two got in here. This is Pecaviensis and Amethysta Glossa in the same pot. We have another Talanzia fasciculata blooming. An unknown hybrid Talanzia epidendrum. This is Encyclia. Um, I want to say it's Diurna or Albozanthina. I, I can never decide. I, when this flowers, I, I always have trouble deciding. I th it looks more like Albozanthina to me, but um, the, the segments are a little small, so it might just be a uh, Diurna if we're now that I'm thinking about it, I think it might actually just be Diurna or a Diurna hybrid because it was labeled Albozanthina, but the flower doesn't look right for Albozanthina. Then we have one. This is CTT Florida Wildfire. I got to name this uh, with permission from the original breeder, uh, Beth Lamb. She made this hybrid and she let me register it and create the name for it. So thank you, Beth, for letting me name this hybrid. It's Brazilian Angel by uh, Catlea araniaca. So it's half Rapiculus lelia, half Guarianthi. And it grows really nicely and has beautiful, deep, deep red flowers. We got Catlea Perseviliana out here, sitting on the corner, getting real, real hot here in the sun, but Perseviliana doesn't seem to mind the, the high light exposure. You can see there's the sun. We have a very sad looking uh, Myrmecophylla Christina. This is a, uh, a Layla, it's Lelia Nicola, I believe. This is Angelata by Lelia Lion's Eye. Really cool flower. I love how well this plant grows. That came from Plantio Larachidia. Another Myrmecophylla Christina. Argramatophyllums. This is the regular scriptum with the spots. This is the green version, the Citrinum variety. Another Myrmecophylla Christina. You can see here in the highlight, I mean, this, this plant gets sun all day long. You can see how red and yellow it's turning. Then we have Thompsoniana aria right here. Um, it's covered in Spanish moss. I'll leave it on there because it's giving a little bit of shade because you can tell it's, it's getting real, real sunburn, but that's fine. Then we have this guy, this is Dendrobium Nina Icer. This is Norma Jackson crossed with Discolor. And this thing blooms all the time. Doesn't mind the sun either. Here we have, uh, this is Tibicinus. The regular, you know, re regular just good old Tibicinus. That one's a nice. And then you got the Encyclia Altissimas. They're blooming up there. We did a video on those guys. You can see they're very brown, just like they usually are. Here is our Amethyst Aglossa Triple X with a bunch of buds here and a bunch of buds forming on this second bulb. So sometimes, yeah, you'll get two or three growths. They'll grow in a year and they'll just sit there dormant until blooming season comes. And then the new growth and the old previous growth will bloom if they did it before. Then we have Oncidium Sweet Sugar getting a heck of a lot of light, but still, still happy. It's blooming. This is uh, Papilio Nan or Vanda Freddy Bowie. That sunburned Amethyst Glossa. See the sunburned leaves? This is the one we did the video on. It got reorientated the wrong direction. And it, uh, see it burned it, 
canes turned red, but the plant's still holding on. Just damaged a few leaves. Then we got some ceratopodiums, punctatums. This is a new one from Redren orchids, Encicli brevifolia. Another Cuban species, kind of like uh, Piriformis uh, in Phoenicia, but just slightly different. We have another Dendrobium canyanum blooming back there. Encicli malbusii. Um, this is an unnamed hybrid. This is a Dinocala crossed with uh, Encicli cindy. Encicli cindy crossed with Encicli dinocala. I don't think that one's been named yet. What else we got here? This is RLC Shinifat Diamond. Oh, while we're here, Lelia purpurata. This is the Cardinia variety. Some Rip Salis of some sort. This is a Miracillium trinastum alba. That's a really rare, rare thing right there. What else we got? Some Dendrobium anosmums. The pendulous dens, you know, always look sad because they go dormant. But look at all the buds forming on that. It's gonna make a bunch of flowers. This is Gutata cerulea. And then just a moment ago, I showed you all this epidendrum. Here's the name. This is Pacific Tiki Punch crossed with Pacific Prince. I don't know if that's been registered and given a name yet or not. Here is Glenn, if you're watching. Glenn gave me this. This is a Mexipedium Xerophyticum. This is one of those slippers that likes a lot of sun and I think it, I don't remember exactly where it comes from, but it comes from a very arid, arid environment, I believe. It's got cute little white flowers all over it. You got another war paint. Another, I want to say this one's Vigor Noviceps. It looks like the tag is long gone. A sad looking Encyclia rufa. Has some sort of trichocentrum. What do we got here? Oh, this is a new one. I like this one. This is Hidden Gold. It's Richard Mueller crossed with Why Not. It changes colors with age. Kind of opens up this reddy orange color and then fades to yellow. Epic Catathron Hilo Adventure. Hmm, is there anything else in here I didn't talk about? No, I've not yet seen this one. Catlia Hawaiian Wedding Song Cultivar Virgin. Not bloomed that. I've had that for a long time. It's been a real slow grower for me. Susan Fender. There's a red Tolumnia with no ID. A real crispy looking BC Hippodamia, Cymbidium, uh, Dianum. What else we got in here? This is a sad looking, I think this is actually kind of, I think this has got some root rot issues. Why not leopard? That's probably going in the trash can. I can tell just by looking at it, it's got some, some root issues going on there. This is Ancep's Passion. We got Williams Drumbeat, very red from the highlight and the cold. We have a Renanthra uh, Manila tea orchids. I'm sure that plant's not loving the cold that we've had. The Quesnelia, it's a weird looking bromeliad thing. We got a piece of Millennium Magic Witchcraft. There's a piece of RLC Robert Palmer. Back here, we got a Catlea Earl, right Imperialis. Here's a white Catlia, tidy eagle eye, variety white angel, that's got FCC. Catlia Dolores Ziegfeld Carruthers, I love this plant. That is an absolute favorite of mine. We have George King Serendipity. Uh, Encyclia Fowlii, not, 
It had, see, it had some new growth come off of it this year. I think it needs to be repotted. It's been in this pot for too long. Sickly Valii. Another Guarianti Beringiana variety, Cerulea. What else we got? Catlia Maxima, Semialba. This is a not, this is an unbloomed seedling, believe it or not. This plant has never bloomed. It's huge. Not bloomed yet. Catlia Intermedia Alba. This plant grows really, really well. Does not mind the cold. We're about to be awarded with some buds. This is Sinying Pink Doll. That's a, that's a real popular Calia. We have a Guadatam. Brassavola Little Stars. Turned real red from the highlight. This is Sinying Fancy Gold October Fireworks, I believe. Some unknown Catley over there. I have no clue what that is. The tag lost me years ago. BC T Booth Lee. Uh, what is this? This might be I want to grow apple blossom if I'm not mistaken. I think this is apple blossom. What do we get here? Oh, Hawaiian Island Bride. That's a really nice pink cat, Leah. There's an encyclia Randii Alba. Another piece of uh, Catlia Earl, variety Imperialis. This is Serena O'Neill. You always know, they always have that red tinge to them. Gutata Alba, that's a, that's a tough plant to grow. And a whole bunch of stuff back there that I don't think I can reach right now to get the tags. I know there is a candy corn. There is a, this plant, good Lord, what is that? Can't remember. No, I can't. Can't reach it. That might just have to be left out for another video. Because I have to move this table to get to it. But there's just some new four inch cat layers back there. And some bromeliads. And there's a hanging bar right there. This driftwood here has got a Bratonia sanguinea, a Lelia rubescens alba, and a Hippodamia growing on it. And I'll see if I can get over there. But real quick, I almost forgot. So we have Golden Vanguard, Cymbidium. This guy is way overdue for repotting. But this is one of those Cymbidiums that does real well here in our Florida heat. Here we have a Myrmacocatlia Memoria Rubensalata uh, seedling. This, these get massive. I have some big ones of that. This is BC or BLC Haiku Dawn, Sunshine and Raspberries. It's growing in Cypress Mulch. Doing pretty good. It's got some new new buds coming. This is Lelia purpurata variety Schusteriana. And these plants, Lelia purpurata, they're just always yellow. I've never been able to get them not yellow. And I, I just now think it's just part of their part of their natural natural being. And they just don't want to ever be green. They just like to be yellow. Here we got Rio's Little Treasure. I love this. This is Violacea semi-alba by Alba purpurea. And if you don't have one of these, you should get one. This one came from Plantio Larachidia um, down in Sarasota. Uh, they may still have this, but this is an excellent, excellent plant to have. Here are some Beatrice Orendorf. This is Bractescens crossed with Boracana. So this is going to be like 75% uh, Bractescens by genetics. And it's got cute little reddish maroon flowers. Here we got a sun bleached antelope den of some sort. Tag's gone, I can't remember what it was. There is our long life angel. Uh, Neobenthemia gracilis, or this not, this may be something else. They may have reclassified this plant. Another guadatam. Actually, this white may not be Guadatam. This might be the um, Encyclia Howard Eye by... Oh, why am I drawing a blank? This might be an Encyclia Howard Eye hybrid. I can't remember. Some sort of Epidendrum. Don't know what it is. This is our QF uh, 
Quintal's Touch. That's right, Quintal's Touch. It's Johannes by Touch of Gold. And this one, the cold really defoliated quite a few leaves off of that. Another Certipodium seedling that we just repotted. Here in this crepe myrtle, we just got all sorts of stuff that I stick over here that I, it's kind of a live or die situation over here. We got LC in, in here graph. This is Angelata by Gold Digger. That's a really nice plant to have. What else we got? Lelia Aria. Lelia Angelata. This is just now, this is the regular form of Angelata. Just now opening. Getting a lot of sun. This is a subufolia and a uh, key lime stars. Getting way too much sun. Rinko Lele Digbiana. Doesn't seem to mind it too much. It's red, but they'll grow just fine like that. Got another Paul Storm sitting in there. Dendrobium MSC Anemone. This is Bracteosum Bitanii. These blooms just last forever. And that's probably all that's worth showing. Here we got Dendrobium Anton, or not Antonatum, sorry. Stradioides, very cold damage. Did not like the cold at all. You can see all that yellowing. I was a bad orchid parent. I had this inside for quite a while during the cold storm, or the cold snaps, but I, I got lazy bringing it in and out, and I didn't bring it in for a few of them, and it's, I've suffered the consequences. Another Nina Iser, this is awesome. Some Certipodium hybrids. These came from uh, Charles. He picked these up at Redlands for me. So, Charles, these are doing awesome. Uh, this is uh, Certipodium um, polyphyllum. This is one of those ones that actually does not go dormant. It drops some leaves, but it doesn't have a, a hard, hard winter rest like the Punctatums do. Some a Speciosum seedling. I had three of these. I gave one to my coworkers uh, last week, so now I got two. And for the first time ever, we got blooms on the speciosum, finally. I don't know if this is gonna show up. We are in a lot of sun here, so it might be kind of washed out, but there are the flowers. It only took many, many years. I think I got this in like 2018 as a four inch plant. So it's taking a while. So this is Dendrobium Flamingo Gardens. Very similar to Nina Iser. Certipodium punctatum. Doesn't look like it's awoke from dormancy yet. All right, and one more Certipodium to show. This is punctatum as well. Here is a new spike, a new spike, two new spikes. Sometimes you'll get this. You get a new growth that bifurcates into three. You get the new growth along with a double spike. So that's a really a good sign. And then you got a new spike, a new growth and a new spike. So this punctatum is gonna be loaded with flowers this year. So y'all stay tuned for that. And S Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, if y'all don't know his orchid channel, go check him out. He's, he does a really good job growing these out in Texas as well. And he loves certipodiums like I love certipodiums. And y'all should go check out because he does a real good job growing certipodiums. So if you want to see somebody who's not in Florida's climate that grows them, go check out his channel. But Steven, if you watch this video, look at all those spikes. So y'all stay tuned. We'll have to do a video on that. All right. So we got here. This is Encyclia Dr. Robert H. Palmer. This is Piriformis by Cordedra. That's a really nice plant. And the name of this thing, this poor sad little thing escapes me at the moment, but it's got a spike on it. Calia Schilleriana, one of my favorites. Encyclia Tempensis Alba, that's a tetraploid alba. This is Encyclia Aspera. That's got a really funky, it's got a funky smell, but it's a good smell. It's kind of like I don't know how you describe it, but it's a good smell, but it's just so different. There is a unknown Catlia, don't know what it is. This is Encyclia Phoenicia by Gracilis. Then up there behind it is a totem with 
Renko Lele Digbiana and a Dendrobium um, Mimiens. And then right here with all these spikes, this is Dendrobium Canaliculatum. So I'll have to do a video on that when these, these guys open up, but I love this little Australian Dendrobium Canaliculatum. And here on the palm trees, see if we got anything blooming. The last of the Lele Angelatas are fading. Here we got a single flower on, this is a Miramaco cat. Um, Claudia's Grand Sunrise, if I, I think that's, I think that's right. Claudia's Grand Sunrise, bunch of noble buds. Anything, some pendulous dens up there. Uh, Miramaco, Mirma, or Miramacophila Christina, man been speaking too long i'm starting to lose my train of thought but this is christina as well it's just a small piece that i put on the tree a couple years ago and now it's really getting up there in size but i have my doubts on whether this plant's ever going to bloom here in this much shade because there's two trees above it so i mean it does get some sun in the winter this time of year but when summer comes this is going to be in a lot of shade so We'll see if it blooms or not. It may take a long time to get it to bloom. But that's all I got out here on the trees right now that's worth showing. All right, you guys, and we're back. Um, we're now upstairs on the balcony, and I don't think you guys have been up here uh, yet before. So welcome to the balcony growing area. Um, I'm gonna show you guys what we have on this bench and kind of what we have growing you know, all throughout here, very much afternoon sun. But let's go ahead and get started. I'll just definitely showcase the stuff that's blooming right now and the, the plants that are a little bit more special to us. So the one that's blooming here right now, this is Paphiel Petalum Venustum Variety Album. And it is just such a beautiful white and green with that veining there very fuzzy stem pretty cool we have a lot of different um platycerium up here so this is elephantotus here in this four inch pot um so velvety i wish you guys could feel it um, and we have some other big ones up there hanging on the bar but uh, let's keep looking here so i have a dendrobium aberrans which is a very miniature dendrobium with cute little white flowers once it blooms but um, i definitely need a water out here guys so don't don't judge how dry the media is got a few different types i have a dendrobium qf blue gold which is an antelope type and what else do we got here let's see one that everyone should have we've got a ctt busy bev super cute just like a lavender color and it just sparkles in the sun okay then here we have dendrobium crongy little egret this has been open for a hot minute but it is an antelope type dendrobium and can take a good amount of sun loves it and this guy opened up it looks like a pom-pom very golden Let's see if I can find the tag for this guy there's an epidendrum of course the tag this is why you don't use labels folks this was back at the beginning of our orchid journey here but uh, label makers wear off and that's why you need to use the metal tags I'll be sure to insert the name for this one it is just beautiful and definitely more spikes to come there and then we have cochleata this thing just blooms non-stop if you saw the one downstairs got my Hoya and my Hindu rope here I got this from Paul at Paul's Plantscapes at one of the open houses. 
got it to bloom for the first time ever about six months ago, so I was like super happy about that. That one, my very first there. We've got a Dendrobium Pangsang. That's an old flower, but we got more buds coming. You guys are starting to see a theme, right? And that fell over. This is Cattleya Corrupta. Just finished blooming. That's done for. Okay. We've got a Dendrobium Parisii Alba. This little two inch pot. Just hanging out. Let's keep looking here. What else do we have blooming? We've got a bud. If y'all saw a theme, we had an elephant down there, a walrus, and now we got a turtle pot. This is Dendrobium trigonophis crossed with self. But we got some buds. Super excited about this. We're getting it to rebloom. Okay. We have Encyclia altissima crossed with Civ. This is that other um, compot. I think we have one more somewhere hiding out, but this is um, what Tristan was repotting in our previous video. And this is the Dendrobium neotaka that I got um, at the Sarasota Orchid Society show back in January. So those blooms are done. We're in the beginning of March, and that was beginning of January, so it's lasted quite a long time. Epidendrum prismatocarpum. Just hanging out there. We've got a Lelia back there hiding. What else, what else, what else? Got a Catlea Ludominiana. It's just hanging out there. Got a Catlea Varsavixii Alba. Can't wait to see that bloom. Cyclea Dichroma. Got RLC Shinifat Diamond. Whole bunch of seedling stuff here. Let's see what we've got. Do, do, do. This is the tag broke on this, but this is on Sidium Ampliatum. This is a really pretty yellow dancing lady flower. But it looks like a little tortoise shell with the pseudobulbs there. Everyone should have that species in their collection. It's just gorgeous. And let's see, we've got Bulbophyllum. Got a lot of Bulbophyllums up here. Bulbophylla tingamburianum. Aria. If I'm butchering the names, you guys, forgive me. That's why I'm showing the tags. What else we got here? Show my little, little guy. This is BLC Graham Iker Lynette crossed with self. This is just a cool little seedling I found at the September sale. It's just really drawn to it. So that came home with us. What else we got? Just bare root dendrobiums just hanging out on the bench. Forgive us. Okay. We've got the Vanden Nikonen or Nichinen. Nikonen white? However you want to say that. But got that growing right here. Which is beautiful. Also got a Catlia Maxima dark pink crossed with self. Happy root tips there. Got new growth. Again, found this at Plantiola Orcadia's September sale. Had to come home with us. I mean, things just jump in the cart, you guys. I don't, I don't know how it happens, but it's got to come home with us. Okay, and then this big boy, Bulbophyllum Wilberchang. Stinks, y'all. Smells like rotting flesh, but it is a very, very cool flower. We got more on the way there. Okay. We've got something opening over here. Catlia Betty Palmer. 
this beautiful white Catlia. It's gorgeous. Here we have Encyclia Malbusii crossed with Venetia. You can tell we like Encyclias and Dendrobiums around here. And then this pink one opening up. I didn't even know this was open. My goodness. This is, get the tag for you guys. LC Snooky, which is Lelia Anseps crossed with Catlia Geminii. This was a division. So that's opening up some more, more buds to come. What else do we have to show off here? We've got an orange flowers opening up, which is CTT Trick or Treat SVO4N crossed with Trick or Treat Orange Nugget, which is an AMAOS award. Let me see if I can get that down and show you guys. I can show y'all. We've got some sort of podiums hanging here. Big ol' encyclia hanging here. Sort of the, the highlight loving ones. And as you can see, we've got a lot of growing space. So all of our Vandas are hanging there. That was our Vanda bar. Okay. This is Brassavola cucolata. It's hanging there. That red pigment on the leaves is just from the highlight situation. And then here in this white pot hanging is Dendrobium tobawens variety giganteum. Uh, the cultivar is Green Mystery and that has an AMAOS award. And it is a sib cross. I'll see if I can get that down to show you guys the flower on that. It is absolutely stunning. And there is the flower, you guys. Looks like it ate some flaming hot Cheetos. It's beautiful. It's a huge flower, you guys. Like that's, it's my hand. It is so cool. So there's that one. I don't even think I can get that down, but hopefully you guys can see that orange flower there. That's the trick or treat. Here we have an old flower, but that's the Darwin orchid, the Angrecum. And what else we got over here? So more Plantiola orchidea stuff. We've got uh, Myrmecophylla Raphael Romero, which is Alba purpurea. Um, Paraba crossed with Christina sweet fragrance so this is on a little cork mount here and then we have a true myrmecophylla alba purpurea crossed with self again hanging on a little cork mount there so very much highlight loving little guy we got another dendrobium parisii that is the semi alba right here i can't reach it guys i'm short i'm sorry but it's hanging there having a great time and then we've got encyclia phoenicia just mounted on a piece of wood and then got two different plants here encyclia phoenicia on this bottom part and this is Bretonia lindenii up here and the tag there says it's another species from Cuba seed capsule and wild collected pretty cool and then for all my Hoya lovers out there this is Hoya carnosa check this out you guys do, do, do. We've got flowers in the make right there. Super exciting. I mean, this thing is just loaded up. Very awesome. I mean, it's just jam packed, you guys. That is our full Orchid Tour collection. And Obviously, we didn't list every single plant 
an orchid that we have because we like to have a little bit of mystery. We got to show you guys some stuff when it's in bloom because, I mean, there are some people who only enjoy looking at orchid blooms and there are some people that, you know, want to see if it's green or not. So um, we will definitely be keeping you guys um, in the loop and we'll be showing more as things open and progress. Um, let us know if you enjoyed the video and drop a comment down below letting us know what your favorite part of this orchid collection tour was and be sure to like and subscribe it helps make the orchids grow so um that's our little slice of heaven here on earth um we appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next one see you next time